everybody, welcome. Um, thank you for joining me. We are going to be talking a little bit more about essential oils and how to incorporate them into your life. Um, more kind of a how-to daily guide for beginners, if you will. And I think I have everything set up in kind of categories that I want to talk to you about them in, or how I categorize them in my life at least. But um, we are going to jump right into it. In the previous video, I talked a lot more about the history and the composition of oils. And so I will do that less here. Um, we're not going to zone in on each individual oil specifically, although I do want to do that for every oil that I'm a big fan of. Um, they're just so unique. So first and foremost, you need to dilute your essential oils in a proper carrier oil. And I have kind of my carrier oil section here. Um, you're gonna wanna start, if you are brand new to essential oils and brand new kind of detoxing your skin off the chemical products, you're gonna wanna start real low, maybe like one drop of essential oils to 20 drops of a carrier oil and something like that. You'll see my assistant, Teddy, walking around, by the way. He's my giant wheat and terrier. We think he's mixed with the giant poodle or something, but anyway. Um, so with picking your carrier oil, you're gonna wanna pick one that is right for what your skin needs at that time. Um, is your skin dry? Is it extra oily? Is it acne prone? Um, all these different reasons. There is a, I believe it's called a comedogenic, uh, comedogenic scale, if I'm saying that right, but the scale that measures the likelihood that oil will clog your pores and is it good for your face or not. Um, so I like things like castor oil because it has a zero on the scale, which means it won't clog your pores at all. Um, same with argan oil. And then things more like coconut oil, which I love. You know me personally, you know how much I love coconut oil. And um, I preached for years to put it on your face. So, um, I'm retracting that now, and that's actually a four on the scale. So it is highly likely to clog your pores. Um, but one thing I do wanna say about that scale is that when you are coming off commercial products and using chemicals on your skin and as your skincare and converting to all natural, um, your body's going through a lot of detoxing and it almost anything will be better than the chemicals you're putting on your skin. So I did see a lot of success with coconut oil on my face for many years when I was, you know, kind of coming off wearing, you know, foundation and then coming off commercial cleansers and moisturizers and step by step you do it. And, but now it will break me out because I have a very clean face, clean diet. And it, it just, um, I have learned to turn to other oils. So I really like argan oil and I really like castor oil and jojoba oil. For example, jojoba oil is really good for um, balancing the natural sebum in your skin, your skin's natural oil production. And what that's gonna help with is if your skin actually is very oily, it's actually craving to be cleansed with oil. Um, you are stripping off all of the oils that are there to keep your skin healthy as well when you're using those commercial cleansers and your skin goes to overtime or your pores go into overtime to recreate the oil that they need and it ends up overproducing and that causes acne. And so by avoiding oil products, um, you actually could be contributing to your acne. You need to be quiet. Um, it is the lawnmower day, so he wants to go greet people. Um, but that one, those are some of my favorites. Um, I love, let's see, I am not brand specific either. You'll see that. I don't care that much. I do care that everything from here on out that I purchase is organic, um, but I just 100% pure, know if it's diluted or not, and is that a blend you still want to buy some? Like, you know, my Merge 20% um, of a formula and dilute it into some other oils, so that's okay. But 100% pure, know its solution amount, and most of the time you're gonna want it absolutely undiluted. Um, but, and then organic preferably. Um, it's, you know, things like the citrus oils, those oils come from the peel and the rind, and if those things are not sprayed with pesticides and those type details and factors will absolutely contribute to the health of the oil. So be thinking about that. Um, 
but let's see so yes i like apricot kernel oil rose hip seed oil um amazing amazing for anti-aging papaya seed oil maracuja oil which is passion fruit oil um true story papaya seed oil and maracuja i just bought for the name i just like that they were papaya and passion fruit um, i'm a very tropical personality um, in my brain uh tamanu oil i think i'm saying that correctly and tamanu oil is one if you research it's just one to two drops is an amazing amazing treatment to add to just any of your moisturizers uh, but it's referred to as a carrier oil so i actually had that in different section before i started filming um vitamin e oil smells amazing um i got let's see i just have a big pumper of sweet almond oil um, I like that for all over skin care, um, olive oil, organic, um, cold press, by the way, cold press. I forgot to say that in my list earlier. So you're going to want to look for hundred percent pure, um, no solution level, go for undiluted, um, cold press organic. Boom, boom, boom. Um, but olive oil is another amazing one. Castor oil. Whew, um, so many things you can do with castor oil, incorporate that in your life. Um, when I, buy my next castor oil and i'm out of this i'm gonna get the one that comes in the amber bottle um that'll also be from heritage store but i am trying to focus more on buying less plastic now um but step by step um wheat germ oil is really good um i use this in my spf oil that i'm trying to perfect the formula of uh, but i usually keep this one in my fridge um it's really good not this is like a four on the scale of clogging your pores so this definitely will it's a really nourishing nourishing um it, it has some amazing benefits for your skin but you're not going to want to use it daily um, and i don't know if it's a good one to oil cleanse with but i just use it kind of as a mask once or twice a week i'll mix um a little bit of this with a little bit of a lot of essential oils and get it done um coconut oil i love coconut oil i have been bathing my skin in coconut oil for about 10 years and um it's really my skin is really soft i contribute that to always people always thinking i'm about a decade younger than i am which um i love that and that's kind of why i've taken to all these oils and i want to i joke that you know by the time i'm 50 i want to look 20 but um i really take it seriously um and your skin represents everything of your internal body um, but especially your liver if you're it's showing up on your skin it's probably something going on with your liver too and your skin's the largest organ you have um, it's a giant sponge to be honest so if you won't put it in your body if you won't eat it off a spoon i wouldn't put it on your body personally um, but yes so these are the carry oils um, i do have some honey here this is not an oil Honey is not an oil at all, but um, it's an amazing cleansing and just facial mask um, to mix some essential oils with your honey and leave it on for maybe 10 minutes. And then when you get in the bath, rub it off. It's really nice. It's softening, but it's cleansing. It's amazing. Um, let's see. Okay, so I put this here. Jasmine. <laughs> has nothing to do with jasmine um when i first started buying essential oils i per this one i accidentally bought the fragrance oil of instead of the essential oil so i just want to let you know um, pay attention a lot of brands do sell both um so you're going to want to pay attention but with that said it smells fantastic and this is probably 12 years old um so i've used it in some candles and stuff like that um okay so i also have my crystals and stuff around to prove a point um if you are into crystals and crystal energy and i think of them as energy supplements um, i'm a big fan i'll talk more about that eventually but i have some of my favorites here if you if you look at a lot of creams and nice things like that that um, of the sacred retailers that you know they infuse or bless the formula with crystals all they're doing is either setting a crystal inside of that for a day a night a month um, or they're storing those bottles by the crystals so if you do have some crystals and if you're paying 30 dollars for a little one ounce facial cream because it's infused with crystals know that you can buy your own crystal and infuse it and it would be way more powerful and just store your crystals around your facial creams okay um there's when we get into that subject we'll talk about direct and indirect infusion 
but just store them around them and they will absorb the benefits. Um, a lot of rose quartz, a lot of jade. Um, you'll see the jade rollers. I do love my jade roller. I, um, I take a lot of baths and I'll touch on that in a second, but with the jade roller, what I've just been doing is taking a glass of ice water. You can put it in your freezer and you can store it in there and the coolness feels really nice, but it immediately starts to warm up to the temperature of your face and it's a crystal. So it's generating energy and heat as you're rubbing it against you, generating energy and heat. And um, that's also what's great about it. And it moves the, you know, lymphatic drainage around and kind of helps push that through and depuff the pace because of that. Um, I don't think these really have anything to do with the elasticity of your skin. I don't think that's something that internally you have to work on. But however, the cooling effect of them, I do find them really nice and um, you, I take really, really hot baths. So I'll stick it in some ice water and just keep putting it in and keep cooling it off. And I often will put my gua sha plate in there um, as well. And then just kind of as what, so with facial cleansers, I'll just kind of do the same motions as they teach you to do with your moisturizers. And then sometimes I do with my moisturizer. Also, um, these are great little massagers. Um, if you are stressed out, you know, this is my rose quartz gua sha. I have a smaller jade one. Um, I think it came with this, but with this, you're going to want to kind of use it on your face and kind of go over a bit. Great combination with oil in the bath um, or just oil on your face in morning or evening application. And then um, these are really great. But I do incorporate them with them. And that's why I have my crystals out is to show you to store them, buy them, infuse them. Work smart, not hard, y'all. Okay, so my favorite oils in the whole wide world are going to be the herbal oils and these are the ones i have up front um, these are going to be your you know eucalyptus your sage your basil your lemongrass your lavender your peppermint um, all kinds of things like that and i it looks like i have a ton of all kinds of different ones i actually have a ton of duplicates like for example this is a big lavender this is a big lavender as you are getting into these oils and as you are going through them, don't throw the bottles away, okay? So my point on that is, here's one of my big lavenders. So one of these lives in my laundry room. One of them lives in my bathtub. Um, I always put a few drops of lavender in every bath. And then uh, one of them lives in my kind of spare bath with all my other essential oils where I kind of will mix up the diffuser or things like that. And generally kind of my little apothecary I'm totally trying to make it my little apothecary but that's my point is whenever you buy especially if you have the same brand like this is my cleaning section over here um i really like the woolsey's lavender for cleaning um you can just open it and pour half the bottle in and then have lavender easier to access around your house um i still have some left of sun essential oils i don't know about the quality of sun essential oils too much i've heard mixed reviews um so i i use them for cleaning i think i have some tea tree over here and some orange and lavender for cleaning those are my guys um they're amazing but yeah i go through those like crazy but um Make sure you're saving these, and if you don't want to save duplicates at minimum, save the bottles and wash them off because these bottles are going to cost you three, four bucks at the health food store when you go to make your own blends and mixes. Um, all of these over here are old bottles of stuff. I'll talk about these in a second. But um, so save those for your own blends and just be resourceful and recycle um, or you can make a blend for someone else and give it to them it'll be great or if you have a bunch left and you have a friend who wants to start trying essential oils pick um a few that are about to run out and give them so it's like a sampler for all the different kinds that they could try um just nice to be generous and give um and help people get to know the healthier side of things okay what else we got we got our citrus oh i love citrus okay so if you are saving your bottles one thing that i just learned in the last year and views like crazy is lemon or 
grapefruit or orange oil will just take off the sticky part that won't come off after you pull a label off a bottle. Um, so if you have a glass jar or something that you want to save and after you pull the paper and the label off, if it's still sticky, you can just use any of those oils, a few drops and um, just keep rubbing and right away it'll come off. It, it doesn't mix a little bit of baking soda and orange essential oil, um, but they're amazing. Um, I also prefer citrus for my diffuser blends, especially in the summertime. But um, one of my favorite diffuser blends is orange, lavender, and rosemary. Uh, I just love that one. That's one I have going today. But um, it usually always involves citrus. And then um, if Mike will do the diffuser, he pick just one of the citrus blends or he'll do like just lemon or just orange and lemon or something like that. So um, we go through a lot of citrus oils here and I love them. They're uplifting. They are really relaxing. Um, they are high in vitamin C when you put them on your skin. They help to lighten your skin. Um, one warning sign, um, any type of citrus oil, do not, do not, do not put on before you go in the sun. It increases the sensitivity of the UV radiation a lot. Um, just ask this pale white girl right here. Okay, so um, just be careful. These are nighttime oils. Nighttime or not on exposed skin in the sun. Okay, this is my, grab, my grapefruit. I've had this for so long and I'm almost out of it. I need another one, but um, I love grapefruit. I've been playing around with um, homemade perfumes and grapefruit's one that I love a lot. Okay, so what else we got? We have, so these are herbs, okay? So the herbs are adaptogenic. Herbs are great for if you are stressed out, they'll calm you down. If you are um, just, they rebalance your pH, they kind of bring your body back into alignment with where it needs to be. And they have what I would call ancient intelligence to go in there and really kind of do a reading on your cells and see what they need. But really good to incorporate if you are, have any illness of any kind. Um, the herbs are wonderful to put on the bottom of your feet if you are sick. Um, if you are sick and you're using essential oils, don't think a diffuser is going to be that effective if you're really wanting it to help. Um, diffusers are amazing. And I actually, I think we're going to get a nebulizer too. Um, I asked for that for my birthday, so we'll see. But um, they only have about 10% output um, into the air as far as between the drops of oil and then what gets into your lungs versus if you were to apply those to the bottom of your feet which is like what a 96 percent absorption rate um, and then only takes about four seconds to get into your bloodstream and it crosses that blood brain barrier immediately on your feet at 100 percent nearly versus um, the other end of the spectrum. So both great, both wonderful. Um, I have a car diffuser too, and then an office diffuser. So um, be mindful of diffusing stinky stuff in your office, okay? It might have health benefits, but not everybody's gonna like stage, okay? Um, not that I know from experience or anything. Okay, so these are my herbal guys. Um, these, oh, my resins, no, no. That's turmeric and that's ginger, my roots. Okay, so turmeric and ginger. Turmeric essential oil has so many amazing benefits just like the powder does and the actual root itself if you take that. And it's amazing. Um, so you definitely should incorporate this daily as far as topically. Um, but just like when you're cooking and if you've ever heard to mix turmeric with black pepper or something spicy because it increases the absorption level by a thousand percent or a thousand times. Um, I don't remember the statistic, but it's big. Well, in the essential oil world, I used what I had and you can also mix it with something spicy like ginger. Um, so these are my roots or my spices. Um, and I have um, a ginger in both bathrooms essentially. This is a good one I use for immunity. I've had a lot of drainage in the past few days. So a lot of turmeric and um, ginger have been going on the bottom of my feet. And if you want, you can put a little, a drop of ginger in your water. Um, I kind of on the internal use or not, um, I personally do believe in using them as medicines, not daily internally, but medicinally as needed. Absolutely. If you're getting sick 
absolutely make some capsules of a few drops of the ginger and the turmeric or you know a um oregano oil and things like that diluted in a carrier oil um and i'm happy to tell you more about that however you need to do your research on what you feel about using them internally and there are certain brands that you should not use or i'm sorry not brands. um there are certain brands that or types of oils that you should not use internally um that are toxic and can kill you if you actually ingest them and then um as well there are other brands out there that make claims that other brands are not of the same quality of them and I just urge you to research both sides of that um, because there are plenty of very wonderful brands that are safe for internal use that are fine and possibly more trustworthy than the brand making claims who actually have been involved in lawsuits. So um, that's my two cents personally. Okay, so what else we got? So um, we got our fragrance oils. Um, I'm sorry. Huh my um floral oils we got the floral ones so this is ylang ylang um this one is just amazing i have not actually had ylang ylang too long um but oh i love the smell of it um i need to i'm trying to figure out a perfume involved in that one okay so our floral so i also have jasmine here and then i have rose <laughs> So exciting stuff. New oils came in. That's what the dogs were barking at. So we are gonna open those as I keep talking. Let's see. So the floor oils. Okay, so that's what I was talking about. Um <laughs> woo, squirrel. Okay, so the floor oils are very luxurious, extremely luxurious. And that rose, um, that one's a relatively cheap one, but they the Bulgarian rose and the higher you get can be quite expensive, but they are just a drop will do it. And they are just magical for your skin for thousands of years. They've been used and um, they're just incredible. So I have Jasmine here as well. Um, research the benefits of Jasmine and then Ylang Ylang. And so these are more my florals. So you can talk about floral notes um over the spicy and stuff you're gonna think the rose and the jasmine okay and then clove clove is technically a floral scent when i looked it up but ooh, my grapeseed oil i ran out of that um we i didn't know which category to put it in because clove came up as a floral and i think they talk about it as a floral on the box of the box on the back of this bottle but um, they also talk about it as a spice. So I think it can go in both categories. But either way, clove is a magical, magical oil that I suggest everybody get one of. Um, I keep one kind of in my cleaning. <laughs> this one I accidentally took off. Ooh, yeah, I always keep forgetting that. I go to like do a drop. And um, so instead what I've had to do is refill my little guy of clove. Um, side note. Yes, I, I do combine different brands and things like that. I just kind of fill up the little guys whenever I get the big guys in. So I have a little bit everywhere or if I want to take it in my purse or something like that. Um, like, for example, with the peppermint, I just will fill up my peppermint in my purse one. And then I don't buy gum or anything like that because, like, why not switch to something that gives you health benefits, too? Um, and I already have a hell of a lot of peppermint that I need to go through. So, um, I love it. But clove is great for your cleaning cabinet because clove is one that is used to make thieves and it is, yeah, I don't know if a disease could survive clove, but as well, it's in the spicy category. Um, so it's, it's very versatile and you could do so much stuff with it and I will make a video of that. Okay. So I have my resins over here, um, my frankincense and my myrrh, um, and my, myrrh is diluted um myrrh is a very expensive one and just make your own decision you know if you buy the very expensive brand and you're just adding a drop to these blends or you're just adding five drops so it will really last you years um but it's it's how you will use them i i truly believe in them i want to get some pure myrrh very soon um frankincense i 
don't, I could say this is the one that turned me off of the big brands that make claims about them being better or not. Um, frankincense is a expensive resin and an expensive oil. However, there are many brands that sell very um, beautifully formulated and clean products. So know that. But um, if you have no idea what oil to use for your acne, for your rash, for your burn, for if all else fails, use frankincense, okay? Use frankincense. Um, if anyone in your family has cancer, research cancer and frankincense. Um, if you are religious at all, um, the you know the story of the three wise men bringing baby Jesus gold, myrrh, and frankincense. Um, and a lot of that is because the myrrh and the frankincense are so wonderful for your immunity that it was to help the baby survive. Um, and I think I talked a lot about that earlier. But I just will put this in my bath and then as well um, straight on my face. So I have worked myself up to where it doesn't bother me on certain oils. But you need to be cautious with that. Don't take a lot of these people's advice who have been using these for years and years. Just be mindful of that. So, okay. So what else we got? We got the Pure Romance oils over here. Uh, so I have been a Pure Romance consultant for many, many years. And the Merrick oil, of the nine of the most healing oils, um, has been one of their main products and just best sellers for 20 years maybe, but this one has, let's see, safflower oil, sunflower, grapeseed oil, tea tree oil, uh, let's see, apricot kernel oil, sweet almond oil, evening primrose oil, jojoba oil. I think that's it. Is that nine? Did I say nine? Um, and it's amazing. And this stuff, um, I, you could heal a sunburn in one day type thing. Um, if you just slather a few coats of that on, or if you have an open cut or scrape or burn, just coat and coat and coat that, and it's gonna heal so quick, so quick. Um, so that's a miracle oil, but you could, this really an everything oil, um, they're amazing. Um, and then this past year, they came out with the blends that, um, no, when I say this past year, I think, yeah, April 2018. So um, these are incredible. They are the roller blends. Um, they have Rise and Grind, which is kind of like a vanilla citrus like perfume. It's amazing. But this is the Wake Me Up one. Wake Up and Confidence. And then we have Open Sesame. So this one, you know how I seriously do it? Yeah. Uh, open Sesame is to focus and focus and clarity. That one's, that one's good for. Um, and then you have time, time to go flow. Make sure I picked up the right one. So this one's good for hormonal balancing, ladies. So this is good um, for any time of the month, but especially that time of the month that you're extra moody and extra pissed off. Um, it's great. So, and I kind of, whenever I put these on, I just put them in slightly different areas. Um. They're all made of volatile oils anyway, so they're gonna absorb very rapidly into your skin. Okay, bang, bang. What's that for? That's fun. Um, this one's a fun one. Okay, so yeah, so bang, bang is um, great for libido and great for calming your mind so you can enjoy yourself, okay? All right, and then basic instinct. So this one is a carrier oil of jojoba oil with some different essential oils in there and then pheromones. Good old pheromone. So this is like aromatherapy in a bottle um, as well as it has the pheromones too. And I'm a big fan of pheromones. Pheromones are confidence. Pheromones are soothing. They are uplifting. They make you happy. Um, and there's nothing wrong with wearing something that enhances that, okay? As well, it will make, it, it, when you're around people and you're wearing that, they will feel the confidence and the happy. And so you, um, you might get hit on a little bit more. <laughs> It might attract some, some people to you, but um, it's great for if you're in customer service. It is amazing if you work for tips, if you, I don't know, are a bartender or help to talk to people or around people, um, you name it. But it's amazing, and I just love it. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so Frankenstein. Okay, we got our resins. All right, our trees. Hi, our trees. Okay, 
Our trees and woods. Okay, so um, let's see. We got tea tree, atlas, cedar wood. Um, tea tree, I got a big guy and a little guy everywhere. Um, but amazing oil. Um, <laughs> it has been an argument in my house about can we please just buy some regular neosporin oil and not just use tea tree. But um, I just think tea tree works better. Okay, cedar wood. This one, I haven't had this cedar wood too long. This is my first bottle. Um, I'm really impressed with that oil. That's really uh, doing a lot for me. Copaiba. Um, Copaiba is an amazing oil. You'll see that a lot in the morphine bombs and stuff like that. I am not saying don't make a morphine bomb. I'm just saying know what brand you're using and make sure you're not doing a morphine bomb every day, if you know what I mean. So um, those are the little capsules you'll see on Pinterest and things like that. So, okay, and over here I got my SPF, guys. This is actually one that I just got in. Okay, so I have tried to eliminate using any type of chemical products at all on my body, uh, but at minimum the sunscreen part, okay? And so what came one of the ones that came in was my new red raspberry seed oil um, which is incredible there have been some false claim not false okay you'll see a lot of stuff about red raspberry seed oil and carrot seed oil being SPF of 30 SPF of 40 woo and um, then you'll see a lot of the complete opposite of hatred towards those claims what happened was there was a study done at one point, 2009 or 2011, something like that, where they formulated that a product made up of things such as red raspberry seed oil, carrot seed oil, um, some other things in there, coconut oil, I believe, was in the formula. Um, that product had an SPF of 30 to 40. So it's not that these don't have some protection, but it's not that they do because of that study. Um, but we are gonna talk in a second about kind of why I love them so much. Um, but the other thing I want to say on SPF too is that's, there's a lot of um, unregulated rules with the printing of what is considered high factor SPF or not. Um, pretty much if it's over 30, 35, I um, question its legitimacy. And there's just a lot of studies out there to show that those products are just the SPF that's just priced uh, listed that high as a marketing ploy okay and it actually isn't offering you any more protection um and when I do my sun video we'll talk about that we'll we'll conquer that but okay so these oils are so amazing because they really help protect the skin from inflammation okay and burning is inflammation let me scoot up here okay so when your skin gets burned in the sun, that actually is inflammation. So um, there's a lot of other details that go into that, but that's kind of the small little synopsis. Okay, so red raspberry seed oil. Um, I have a little guy that I've used up recently, and then I have a big guy. I use this in my SPF oil. Um, I don't like the SPF creams, but I love oil. But I am pale white child here, okay? so. Um, we have had a boat for a few years, but I, I really had to figure out how to be out in the sun a lot and not get absolutely burnt to a crisp. Um, and so uh, I made a blend of red raspberry seed oil and carrot seed oil, and those are my SPF factors, if you will. Um, I've recently started incorporating formulas and zinc oxide and stuff, and um, I'll talk about that in a second. But my main SPF for two, three years has been just using carrot seed oil and red raspberry seed oil in whatever I'm using. And then I do have a bottle of sun bum I bought last year that I need to finish. But, um, you know, so I'm not against buying store-bought ones. I'm just against chemical sunscreens and you need to switch soon. And then um, another one, this is tomato seed oil. And that one is really good for repairing of the skin and regenerating the cells. And it's just super, super amazing. Um, okay, so I have a few blends. Um, let's see. So definitely, you feel free to do the blends. Um, I don't, I, until the Pure Romance blends really hadn't 
stopped and like tried any i just am more for the pure like i'm the type that will want to look up the pure ingredient and then i'll go and search how to buy that pure organic bulk um that's one of my favorite things is to tinker and make my stuff like this but um there's a really good hair blend that this one um let's see so what oils are great for hair we got castor oil Moroccan argan oil, Jamaica black castor oil, unrefined shea butter, vitamin E, marula oil, vitamin B7, and boab oil. Um, so anyway, that one's really great for my skin. Um, I have a clean the air one that I got free with something, a happy roll on. These came free too, so I'm all for the free, the Art Naturals. Um, because of this Art Natural Zen, I realized how much I love that lavender, orange, and rosemary combination. It's freaking delicious. So I suggest y'all try some kind of flavor combo of that. Um, I have totally been playing around with my own products. Um, oh, I didn't put that at the front. Yeah, this is one of my rose quartz slabs. So I will actually, uh, what I do with that is I will just take my like day and night serum. Um, they, I labeled them with a marker that came right off of the oils. But basically, this is my SVF day serum. And this is my vitamin C night repair serum with hyaluronic acid in it. Yeah, I'm fancy. Um, Y'all have a whole laboratory, I swear. Um, this is a hobby for sure that I'm finally like tinkering around with in the real world. Okay, so um, I just store them on my rose quartz slab. So I was talking about store your crystals there. I got this for like $3 on eBay, y'all. It's a real rose quartz slab. So just look for little bits and pieces and um they whether you're into crystals or not they they're very beautiful if you are into crystals it's infusing that rose quartz quality into your oils um also so also i get asked a lot what crystals are best for beauty um indirect method like storing right by them all of them load them up but um for the direct method i vote look it up yourself um some i've gotten onto because i say rose quartz and stuff but aqua marine jade and rose quartz are my three favorites so rose quartz jade and aqua marine and i love those um now let's see i have some stuff here that i've tinkered around with um okay so hand sanitizer i've been using this for years <laughs> it says bitch stop those germs and it's a housewife mopping it's funny um an old friend got that for me and then um i love this it is like jojoba oil beeswax beetroot powder vitamin e oil and like peppermint and i got it at some little shop in colorado um some little apothecary on uh, the same shop i got this one with with my friend lori um, and it's amazing and I love it and I'm already out of it and y'all that was two months ago So it shows you how much I use my lip balm, but um It feels so made. I have to learn how to make that I have got to figure it out and then this I've just reused um, I've actually started making my own eye drops I know I know I'm bold my thing keeps slipping here um, and that is mostly just saline with Filtered, filtered, filtered water. I think, I mean, distilled. Go, we have an RO system here. So um, I just use my RO water, but distilled, if you can do it, just no, no bacteria at all. And we're talking about your eyes. And then um, a bunch of tea tree oil and, or I'm sorry, whew, scratch that. Um, barely any tea tree oil. Like I made a big old thing with one drop of tea tree and um, took it up and just saved a little bit because that's how little tea tree oil, but I don't want bacteria in the eye or anything. And a tiny, tiny, tiny bit is soothing, but y'all, I know I'm bold by putting tea tree oil in my eye, but, um, and then I just saved an old eye drop bottle and put that in there. And so it's still the same applicator and it's great. And then I have my dry shampoo, which I swear by, um, I think this is help to save my hair as far as because it has like oatmeal and stuff like that this is a blonde formula of course um and then my spf face powder um i will typically just do my day serum which does have zinc non-nano zinc oxide in it um so it actually does have spf in my uh morning oil and then after i walk around the house a little bit kind of let that sink in it sinks in really fast because it's with um, I think I did the base with vitamin E and jojoba oil, and um, it'll sink in already. So that's one layer, it's SPF, 
that's not clogging your pores and that's actually healing to acne and everything like that. And then I'll come in and put it on my SPF powder with a makeup brush and that'll seek in really quick. And I put a little bit of rose powder in here. Um, it's really, my skin is so soft all day, so soft. Um, and then, let's see, oh, hydrosols. Okay, so I just got into hydrosols, y'all. I don't know what I was missing. I love rose water. Um, I don't have, I make my own rose water total toner with the powder. I have the powder um, of the rose petals. And I was in deciding to get the powder or not, um, looked at into buying a big old rose bush and or buying a bunch of you know freeze-dried rose petals and da, 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 and kind of looked at all kinds of things um but eventually ended up just going to my natural grocers and buying a bunch of herbs and then chopping a lot of stuff out of my garden i had no idea hydrosols were like the other half of essential oil benefits so i was so impressed so it's like a water texture wise not um potency wise but it's like a water as far as the texture but the benefits in it are as if the essential oil itself is being put on it. So whenever they make essential oils in the same process, I believe, they uh, the byproduct is a hydrazole. And it has all the same benefits because it's from the same plant and it's, you know, um, often steam distilled is how I made these. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm super impressed. So I had lemon balm um, that was going crazy in my garden. And so I made some of that. Um, I got the rose hip herbs themselves and made some rose hip hydrazole. Um, so, you know, getting fancy with it. And then lavender hydrazole, um, that's my girl. So I will use these now as a toner. I have, I'm using up a batch of rose chamomile and matcha tea toner that I made um, that just feels really nice. But I'm almost done with that. And then, but just, I've been like the lavender hydrosol, I keep in my purse and just as I either need a refresher or if my face feels dry at all, I'll just spray that. And it's like a water, but it moisturizes and it cleanses and it's just incredible. So um, I love these. So I'm slowly but surely going to probably work it. I, now that I know how to make them myself, I rigged my own little distiller for the hydrazol. It's not for the oils. Um, I don't know if I'll take that on, but yeah, I want to make all kinds of plants because it's as if you're using the different oils, but it's a whole different texture. It's a whole different ball game. So I love it. And let's see that. Oh, that I also want to mention thought whenever you see on Pinterest, like how to make your own essential oils. If you are taking the herb, and you're just putting it in olive oil and simmering it. Um, two things on that, that's not an essential oil. That's an infused carrier oil. It's infused, it is not, it is not a pure essential oil. That is two different things, okay? A pure essential oil is a volta oil that literally evaporates on your skin as the air hits it. Um, whereas if you use something um, of a carrier oil, that is more the larger molecule oils that are saved in the plant for the offspring. So they're larger. Um, they're not the life force of the plant like the essential oils are. So beneficial, but when you just put the dried herbs or the orange pills into olive oil and boil that, you do not get an essential oil. Um, and the second thing I want to say on that is heat. Be careful about heat. And it could kill off a lot of the good stuff. And over 100, I'd say 115. Like be safe, call it 115 degrees. But anything over 118 degrees technically does kill off the live enzymes and can just be very damaging. Um, it's, it's loses its benefits at that point. So. Anyway, that's what I have for you. Um, I Let's see, I clean with them. Did I forget anything? Oh, my bats. Okay, yeah. So I keep talking about shaman bats. So what's going on with that? So I saw it turned online. So this is not a Courtney idea, but essentially you put Epsom salts in there and you put, let's see, Epsom salt detoxes the body. Um, you put about a cup of baking soda in there and that will rebalance the pH, I think is the role that plays. Um, but 
baking soda is very good for you as well. Um, some people are allergic to it or sensitive to it, and that's okay. Um, there are some alternatives, but the combination of those two really open your pores and depending on how spiritual are, you know, really can help cleanse the aura. So from there, I always have done that and I just combine them in a jar. So I just have to take a big scoop and put it in there and it's already done. And I take really hot baths. I recently got a little bath filter. Um, so because my hair, I really had to kind of go back to work on my hair because it was just so dry and um, just needed help. Um, so we got the bath filter because typically, I mean, I'm, I take a few showers a month, but I'll, I'll take a bath morning and bath at night. Like I love it. It's just, it's a ritual for me. So, okay. Back on subject, the Epsom salt, the baking soda, the essential oils. So on these, I believe you should pick a sacred oil. Um, what I mean is with ancient intelligence, with, um, been used for thousands of years type thing. You know, a lot of herbs in Chinese medicine and that type thing. But frankincense, myrrh, um, the herbs especially. Um, but when your pores are open, open, open like that in a hot bath, what you put in those pores immediately is really important because they're magnified. Your body's gonna absorb them a lot more than it would if you just had it, you know, topically go or, um, diffusing or something like that. And then as well, I like to add crystals. Um, I have quite the crystal collection. Um, I believe that we are conductor of energy. The salt is a conductor of energy. The water is a conductor of the energy and the crystals are a conductor of the energy. So ultimately what you're doing by bathing with that combination is you are cleansing yourself i mean hygienically and energetically at the same time and you know helps me sleep like a baby so whatever right um uh, let's see oh um yeah this is my happiness cabinet that i wanted to touch on um a lot of the citrus oil are uplifting a lot of the lavenders are relaxing but um if you have never really used oils before for aromatherapy and really checked out their benefits and watched your mood, I really suggest it. And, you know, just take about 30 seconds when you put the oil on or you're spraying the hydrazole or you're doing whatever, cleaning, you know, and sit there and just smell that product or smell that oil or just sit there and kind of let it sit there for a second and just take 30 seconds for yourself, okay? It's not gonna make a difference if you are arriving at what you're doing 30 seconds later, but stopping and breathing for a second can have a lot of power in calming yourself down and helping you get through your day. Um, let's see, so yeah, I think that's it. Um, thank you so much for joining me and letting me show you my collection here. And um, I'm excited to tell you more about what I end up formulating and this many projects I'm working on. Um, but play around with them. And you probably already have some of these in your house. And y'all, if you're just getting started, I would say just lavender and tea tree. Lavender and tea tree. Um, you can do so much with the basics with just that. But um, over the years, you will collect a bunch. And so from there, I inspire you to work on your own skincare and start making your own products. And just as a hobby, I just love it. So thank you guys. All right. Bye.